Nowadays, we want our branded intro bumpers to be very quick, ideally three to four seconds. Gone are the days of the 10 second intro bumper. Check this out. Wow, all that in just three seconds? In this video, you'll learn how to create such an impactful intro bumper using Camtasia behaviors, including the new fly-in behavior combined with kinetic text and some additional secret sauce editing tricks. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Let's go through the step-by-step -step process that I use to create this cool intro bumper. First, let's look at the anatomy of it. As you can see, when we start in the beginning here, you have a background there with the initials uh, that are kind of muted based on a shape overlay that I put on that has the opacity adjusted. And then as you, we start, the fly-in of the initials comes in the color version of it, and you can see the background moving. And then as, as things progress, you see my name is coming out from the center out to the two sides, Gord Eisman, Gord to one side, Eisman to the other, and then my tagline below that. And then as the background continues to move, we then end with a fly out. Now, the fly in and fly out features that you see at the beginning and end here are something new in Camtasia 2018, and that's called the fly in behavior. And that's what we used in here. And you're going to learn a little bit about that as we get in here. Now I'm going to first mute the tracks that we don't need to look at. So you can just see how I put together the background. First, I'm just going to mute the tracks except for the background so you can see how I set that up. Okay, so as we start here, I'm just going to shrink things down a little here so you can get perspective. You can see here we have my big colored logo in the background and that's there in GI. And you can see I've started it off to the left. It's square just as it is with all of these angles. And then as, as it comes in, you see it starts to move over and start to turn slightly. Here's my end keyframe for my custom animation, which was just done by going to animations here and adding custom to the line and then stretching it out to be the length that it is here with the end keyframe ending here. And I adjusted all of that just by using this little arrow here, okay, which is, which is to the rotation handle. I can undo that, what I just did. But you can see here, I've scaled this Im image up to 273%. And then on top of that, I'm going to open that track up. I added a shape layer. And that shape was just an annotation that I added from here, brought that on. And then what I did with the shape layer is I adjusted the opacity down to 88%. See if it's at 100, you don't see anything, but we moved it down to 88 because I wanted to do this motion background effect with opacity. So now with that shape layer on top, you can see we have this nice initial set running in the background with, with, the, uh, with the white co covering overlay with some opacity. Now let's open up the rest of the tracks. For the next step in the process, I added in my logo. So I just dragged the, my, the media onto the canvas. And then I added what's called the fly-in property. And in the fly-in property, you see there's an in, a during, and an out. And I, the only parameters I've changed in here was the movement. I, so I did ease out expo to help make the speed of the logo fly-in to be much quicker. Likewise, I increased the speed to 93% here. The default here was 90. We put it to 93 and the ease out I adjusted to be expo because of the way I wanted it to look. So if you see here and we just run that, you see how fast that came in. It was lightning fast and that was all done through the fly in. So once the fly in was completed, I then wanted to immediately split, split the clip here so that I could then now add in an animation to a slightly rotate 90 degrees the logo and end on this keyframe. And again, that was done just by adding a custom animation and setting over here, as you can see in the Y axis, the rotation to 90 degrees. And that made the nice effect here of enabling the logo to partially spin and then vanish. While the logo spin is going on, I also wanted to bring out the text for my name. As you can see, there's Gord and Eisman here. And if you can see how this was constructed, they, the names come out from the middle. 
one going to the left and one going to the right. And the way that was achieved was by adding the two text elements and then utilizing the reveal behavior. So as you can see here in the reveal behavior, on the in we have text was set to simultaneous so that all the letters come out together. As you can see, the default would have been text right to left, and we'll leave that as text simultaneous. I also changed the movement to be ease out expo, and the default there was ease out court, again for speed. And here in this case, I set the, the direction to right because the default is left. But I've also, as you can see here with speed, I've increased it from 88 up, up to 90. So as a result, you'll see here that both these these two pieces of text here perform really nicely as a reveal that comes from the middle out, outward, okay? And then that piece stays on for quite a while till then a stage later ahead. But I just want you to also see that in the context of the behavior, the during and the out elements were set to none. And that's because what we're doing to exit is being controlled in a separate manner out here at the end, which we'll get to in a, in a minute. While the name of the, the text of my name was being put on display, I also put my tagline on display just after. You see here it says learn, apply, transform. That's this element right here, this, this, this clip element. And what I've done is I've used the transition. If you see here, oh, come on, it's called barn door which enables us to have the reveal of it done from the middle to the side. And everything is synchronized to the sound. You can see this little sound patch up here. And likewise, when we did the spin of the logo over here, that was done to sound. And likewise, when the fly-in came in at the beginning. So sound plays a very important part all the way through. And likewise, here at the end in the fly-out, there's sound again. I'm just showing you this top track here has all the, the sound built in. Now, to achieve the really cool fly-out here at the end, I had to do something a little tricky. First, as you can see down here on this last keyframe, that's the last point at which the background animation is moving. So I wanted to get to the end there. And as you can see, the text has changed to on the Learn Apply Transform to be black there. For the, and it's that for the, the remainder. It's, that's part of the effect I wanted. But just before it, you can see that it's the color blue. So in order to be able to get the text black I had to be you know one frame before here and then I was able to just go in here and change the black and then you can see there we have the, the black text there but now in order to get the effect to work properly for the flyout I decided to take an export frame shot of this image so I did an export frame and just grabbed the shot and created a PNG file which is what you see right here so it's the same thing so that's the image that I use now to help me with the flyout on the last step. And that image is right here. And when we get there, you can see that I have an end keyframe, which, um, because I added another animation, but in there is the, it says fly in property, but I didn't use the in or the during, but in the out, I used the fly out default. So as you can see how nicely this all just sort of zooms, um, right into your face and it looks really cool, but, I added this little custom animation again, you know, through going through animations and adding the custom animation. But the reason why I did that is because I wanted to control the level that at which the text was coming out. As you can see that with the end keyframe, you see this outline here, but I'm just going to walk you through the animation from the beginning to the end. As you can see that as I'm scrolling through, that this, this border of the box is, is rising a little. And I made it rise a little because I wanted the text, like the Learn, Apply, Transform, and my name to share more of, of the space together rather than just my name being the predominant part that, that shows as part of the flyout. So that was um, just a slight adjustment I did. And the fly, again, the fly out is how that was, was achieved. Now, What's interesting is this was done from an image that had all the text together. I want to show you what would happen now if I didn't take that export frame and we worked it straight on the text level that I have here because you have the name Eisman, Gord, my first name, that. So all of these boxes are there. I'm going to show you what would happen if we use the fly out features as it would be by default. So here we are with a little example I set up to demonstrate. Here are the, again, the three, word, the three 
text annotations. Now watch what happens. This is all part of the text fly out, the fly out part on the out. So see here, if we used, left it all as text level, see all the letters coming out a little bit at a time and coming towards you in sort of like a, a, a mad kind of way. It's not really in any kind of uniform order. Yes, it does look cool, but that's not the desired effect I had had in mind. One way to have, uh, to have resolved that would have been to take the fly in, like I'm showing you in this little piece here, and in the out, I could have done text simultaneous. So now it all comes out together. See, so that looks like the desired effect that we wanted. Or I could have also done it, which is done here again in the out, as object, and it looks pretty much the same, okay? But in this one, in, in object, this is all I had to put the text in all together as one, one annotation. And remember, we had all of these uh, words and phrases separate because of the special effects that were on them. Okay, and again, just show you here, that's again if the text was all put in together. So obviously this approach wasn't going to work because we had all the other effects going on. So the easiest thing for me to do in the end was to just have that exported frame. It's just one image. As you can see, there's no text, no separation. It's just the one image and the, the fly out behavior is here and it's working in the standard base format and we achieve, we achieve, and we achieve exactly the result we desire. Wow, there's a lot that goes into creating a nice and tight intro bumper, but the effort is well worth it to showcase your branding and engage the viewer to keep watching. To see lots more kinetic text effects and tips on using behaviors, check out the playlist featured on the screen now, or check the playlist link in the video description below. And if you haven't already, go check out my website, GordEisman.com, to see how I can help you with your video production and succeeding on YouTube. See you in another video soon.